One of the best user experience improvements you can make to your Power Apps is to follow responsive design guidelines when creating your apps. In this video, we're going to look at the first five steps I normally take to turn a Power App from non-responsive to responsive. While more goes into responsive design than these five steps, this is a good way to begin when trying to make your app responsive. Let's get started. To set the scene, we have a simple screen with a table control and a container with some buttons above that. These buttons allow us to take action on items in the table. For example, clicking the edit button will set a variable containing the record of the currently selected table item. This opens a form in our non-responsive experience, which allows us to edit the information for the selected record. How can we make this responsive? First things first, we'll head over to the settings in Power Apps and we'll go to the display options. Here we'll disable the scale to fit option. By default, Power Apps tries to keep your app's dimensions the same, no matter what your screen size is. But this often results in a distorted or inconsistent user experience on different devices. Disabling this option allows your app to adapt dynamically and adjust to the actual screen size, giving you more control over the layout. Next, we'll look at any controls that will need to dynamically adjust their location based on the screen size. Containers are a great way to organize your controls, and in most cases, they make life easier for us when trying to make an app responsive. For example, in our list of buttons above our data, we want the buttons to drop to another row when the screen is too small to fit in them all. These buttons are in a horizontal container, so to do this, we'll enable the wrap property on the parent container of the buttons. By enabling wrap, items within the container automatically rearrange themselves into new rows when the screen size is reduced. So this is perfect for mobile layouts where you want your elements to stack neatly. Now that we've enabled the wrap option, we have to follow that up by talking about the height for our containers. In our app, you can see that our buttons adjusted to form a new row, but they're cut off because our container isn't tall enough to display both rows. The wrap option is working as intended because it pushed the filter button to a new row to accommodate the smaller width of the phone screen. To make sure your container adapts to the contents inside, you can set the container's height to depend on the position and the height of the last control inside it. Here's how we can do this. We'll go to our container and we'll go to the height property. If we look at the contents of our container, we can see that the last item in this horizontal container is button canvas three. So this is what we want to base the height of our container off of. In the height property, we'll enter the following formula, button canvas three dot Y plus button canvas three dot height plus self dot padding bottom. Since we have wrap enabled on this container, when the filter button gets pushed to a new row, its Y property will adjust accordingly. So we want our container's height to be based off of this Y property plus the button's height, as well as some padding at the bottom. We can see in the desktop mode that our buttons look the same, even though we've changed the height property. But if we go ahead and play our app, we can see that the filter button now is pushed to a new row and the height of the container has adjusted accordingly. You can also see that the height of the container also adjusts as items are made visible or invisible in this container. Sometimes less is more when it comes to small screen devices like phones. Not every element on your desktop design is necessary on a smaller screen. We can use a formula to dynamically hide elements based on the screen size. For example, we would want to hide our table control after selecting edit on a small screen device so that the form can take up all the space on the screen. To do this, we'll go to the visible property of our table control. In the table's visible property, we'll enter the formula if app.activescreen.size is equal to one, which means the user's device is a phone or a small screen device, as well as var selected record is not blank, which means that the user has selected a record to edit, 
then we want the table's visible property to be set to false. And if not, it can be visible. So in this case, if the user is on a device with a screen size greater than one, the table will always be visible. The screen size is a helpful property to determine what type of device the user is on. These values range from one for a small device all the way up to four for extra large. You can use these screen size values to set various values inside of your app based on the size of the user's screen. The size property is created by comparing the screen's width to the different size breakpoints that are set up in the app. You can view these by clicking on app in your power app, then selecting the properties and going to the size breakpoints option. You can see the default values are 600, 900, and 1200. Any device with a screen size less than 600 would be considered a small device or one. Any size between 600 and 900 would be two. Any size between 900 and 1200 would be three. And then any size above 1200 would be considered four. Now, if we play our app, we can see on the mobile view, I can select a record and I can select the edit button. And now the table has disappeared and only the form is visible. When I click on the close button, which clears the selected record, we can see that the table returns. On our desktop experience, the table is always visible. And if I click on the edit button for a record, we can see that the form also appears. Finally, let's make any overlays we have in the app responsive. If you're using pop-up containers like this filter pane, you'll want them to adapt to the screen size for mobile devices. On a desktop, we would want this to partially take up the space on the screen. In this case, 300 pixels. On a mobile device, however, we would want this filter pane to fill the screen of the mobile device, since we don't want to account for all the different possible widths of phone screens. To do this, we can adjust the width property of the overlay container dynamically with a formula. We'll insert an if statement that checks if the app.activescreen.size is equal to one, then we want the container to stretch to parent.width. Otherwise, we want the container's width to be 300. You can see now if we play our app that on a desktop experience, the filter pane only takes up a small amount of space on the screen. If we switch to the mobile view, however, we can see that when we click on the filter button, the filter pane fills the entire screen. And that's about it. By following these five steps, your power apps will look amazing on any device, whether it's a tablet, a desktop, or a phone. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more Power Apps tips and tricks. Have a great day.